welcome to the satellite communication course so today we will learn that antenna subsystem so what are the various antennas used in a satellite for communication that we will learn here so in general if you see that a satellite consists of a several cam several antennas and that several antennas have the different application so means if you see that in a transponder we say that we have a, a transponder or we have the on board co communication medium on board processing unit so that consists of the antenna there so now the role of the antenna is a different that antenna used for the communication and then antenna can be used for the controlling the orbit of a satellite so now what what various types of antennas can be used in this satellite so generally we are expecting that that antenna is to cover the large area area coverage is to be large there then we we are expecting that they have that antenna should provide a particular beam at particular region that's why we can say that instead of saying a large area we can say that again a spot beam or we can we have the multiple beams there multiple beam antenna so because of that multiple beams so we are able to concentrate on the that particular region or a given region and then the antenna is to provide a various shapes using this spot beam antenna or a multiple beam antenna also that antenna can be movable so we can say that it is about a steerable one means your antenna can move here any direction as per the requirement so that's why that mechanism is to be there in the satellite so that antenna can be moving there so now these are about the basic part of the antenna so that subsystem have the various components and then what are the various antennas used in the antenna that we need to be learn this about to connect to the earth station or setting for the orbital conditions and all in that case that antenna is to be work in the all the region or you can say that that radiation pattern of that antenna is to be a omnidirectional in the case of sending the command from the earth station to the satellite or satellite to the earth station there so they have the ttc system telemetry truss control system we have we can consist and that system will control the whatever the orbit position or a satellite position there. so that's why they omnidirectional antenna is used that omnidirectional antenna consists of a, a wire and that will gives us the omnidirectional radiation pattern and that will be used for the ttc application tt entry application so mostly if you see that the antenna is used they have the reflectors okay mostly 
the types of antennas used that are the reflectors antennas are used the reflectors antennas are used for the transmitting purpose as well as the receiving purpose or the reflector antenna provides a multiple beams or a, a spot beam okay it can provide or it can gives us the multiple beam or a, a spot beam so then operation for that antenna how it works in the given particular band okay so that we should know that what will be the band of operation whether that satellite work in a c band l band or k band or a k u band k k u okay likewise these are the various bands are there so in this particular band so that antenna is to be suitable or it is to be work for the hitting the different bands or a different particular spot there so that's why we should know that a given antenna provide a particular spot or a particular beam or it will cover the different part different area or a different part on the ground ground there so for that purpose we need a high power system okay that output of that antenna is to be high power so if we are supposed to be use a spot antenna then it will be a high power if it is a high power so it will generate the narrow beam we'll get that a narrow beam out so narrow beam means what we should know that what is the radiation pattern of an antenna so that you people are able to understand that what will be the various beams and what are the various parameters of that antenna there so we'll come to the topic of the tradition pattern of an antenna and then we'll define what are the various antenna parameters one by one there so before that we need to learn that what are the various requirements what are the various requirements while selecting the antenna now the requirements are depending upon that whether requirement is related to your electrical component means electricity means band beam width bandwidth radiation pattern vswrs and all the requirements there are the various requirements that will be the electrical one or we can say that electrically required then the requirement is about the mechanically one so mechanically means what that antenna is to be steerable one that weight and everything that is to be considered so we'll go one by one there and again the requirement based on the environment so now these are the about the antenna requirement and antenna requirements are depending upon that what are the requirement through the electrically there so we learn the first a requirement through the electrically requirement of this satellite antenna so electrical requirement means what we should know that what will be the operation in which band that antenna is to be work so it should have the wide bandwidth so your antenna is to be work for the wide bandwidth of operation because as we say that your satellite communication work in a gigahertz of a frequency so if supposed to be we are saying that it is a uplink and uh, that antenna is to work for the c band so in that case we say that is about the bandwidth is about a 500 megahertz for this 500 megahertz so that antenna is to be work similarly that same antenna has to be used for the downlink also so that's why that antenna is to work in that particular range of a frequency there then next requirement is about the what will be the area coverage or what will be the gain of the antenna 
so that beam width if that beam is a narrow so then we we need a, that antenna is to provide the uh, that high gain large power we require if it is a narrow beam if it is a that beam is a wide so there is no requirement for the high power and all but according to that generation of a beam or that area coverage is again it is depending upon that how much is the power requirement or what will be the size of the antenna so that we will get that particular beam width because antenna is to be focused from this earth station uh, from the satellite okay to the earth station now this is about your we say that example we have the satellite here <coughs> now we consider that the satellite is focusing toward the earth station now this particular antenna we transmit to this particular now what will be the area coverage by this given particular antenna so that number of earth station can communicate to the satellite okay so that is about a two way communication not a single communication right now at your home there is a dish tv it's just like a that satellite is a broadcast satellite you people are not communicating or okay user is not communicating to the satellite satellite sending the signal to the user okay only one way operation there but in the case of a two way communication so then or we can say that satellite phone and all so we need that multiple station or that multiple area or area coverage by this given antenna there so there is a requirement for the beam width whether that beam width will be a narrow or wide beam width so based on the beam width you can say that what will be the shape of a radiation pattern now shape of a radiation pattern means what whether it produce a unidirectional radiation pattern or we are saying that a omnidirectional radiation pattern required for the ttc command because the same radiation that antenna can be used from the start or from the launch of this satellite in a given particular space so that ttc system is used throughout our whole life of the satellite and they are communicating to the earth station earth station will send the command to the satellite through the ttc and then that satellite position orbital position or use of the transponder or use of the standby transponder or switch of all the system of a transponder that satellite that can be done by this ttc command so that role ttc so in that case we require the omnidirectional radiation pattern of the antenna there so we should know that what will be the shape of a radiation pattern whether it will be a, a narrow beam or a wide beam and then we should know that for a given antenna whether it will produce a how many number of beams how many number of beams produced by this particular antenna it is only a single beam beam or it can be of a multiple beam so means in a given particular earth suppose i am saying that this particular region not a earth okay this particular region so this one is about a various spots or various particular beams so here this is nothing but the coverage area of the satellite means it has a four multiple beams means this area will be covered okay this other area is not covered so how many multiple beams can be achieved or number of beams generated by this antenna and this will be possible if we use a reflector antenna there because we are using a antenna for the transmitting as well as the receiving one so that's why 
we should know that that antenna is to be work for the given region or given particular area so in that case we should know that what will be the beam and all what will be the radiation pattern of that antenna then we need to talk about that what will be the voltage voltage standing wave ratio that standing wave ratio because our system is connected to the antenna means you are, we can see that earlier we have said that there is a power amplifier and after that we are using the antenna there now amplifier and then we have the antenna system then at the interface of this power amplifier and antenna so no radiation is to be occur at this particular point so how your device are connected how these antenna and amplifiers are connected they doesn't have any reflection there or at that specific frequency or specific frequency band that reflection is a small there so that's why we should know that what will be the standing wave ratio for the given antenna system now if we say that that radiation pattern it has a multiple beam suppose we say or you can say that it has a unidirectional radiation pattern or it has a side lobes there so what are the various side lobes occur and what will be the performance of this particular side lobes generally if we use a horn antenna so there won't be any side lobes but if we are using a reflector or if we are using a dish and all so there may be a side lobe okay so antenna any antenna they have a side lobes but specific antenna they doesn't have a side lobes so then what will be the performance of those side lobes and using that whether that gain of the antenna will degrade or not or what will be the shape of a particular antenna that beam okay shape of this particular radiation pattern then another issue is about what we need to know about that satellite that satellite is work for the frequency reuse so in that case is supposed to be we are using a different types of a polarization so what will be the isolation factor okay so what will be the isolator isolation factor now we say that a frequency reuse if we are using then there will be a number of channels increase and because of that increase in the number of channels so we are getting so to increase the number of channels we need to use a different polarization technique that is about a frequency reuse in that case we say that horizontal or vertical polarization or we can say that right hand circular polarization or a left hand circular polarization that is to be used so in that particular case what will be the cross polarization factor or what will be the isolation factor if we say that we have the vertical component and we have the horizontal component and for each and every component there is some image there is some image component So in that case, we need to know about what will be the that factor, that cross polarization factor, or what will be the isolation factor between these two particular components. So that is about a cross polarization. Then we can say that for a given particular antenna, for getting a sufficient gain, so we need to use a power amplifier. and that our power amplifier generate a high power or the output of the power amplifier will be high power so then 
our antenna is to work for the given particular power. So that's why we need to know about what will be the power handling capacity of the given antenna. So now these are the requirements. So requirement that requirements for the satellite antenna based on the what are the electrical characteristics of this antenna. Okay, or antenna system. These are about the electrical characteristics of a antenna system in a satellite there. So that be bandwidth, beam width, shape of antenna, number of beams, PSWR, side loops, okay, likewise. These are about the electrical requirement for this satellite. Then the requirements, we need to know about the requirements mechanically. What are the mechanical requirements? So, given antenna, because that antenna is present in a satellite, so while calculating the weight of a satellite, that antenna weight is to be considered. So, total weight. So, they have the engine, they have the solar panels and all. Along with that, they have the antenna there. So, in that case, so we need to design the antenna in such a way that their weight is to be small there. But again, the question arises, if we say that if we are using a small antenna, they will not get that sufficient bandwidth or beam width or power handling capability will be less. Now to with achieving those parameters of the that antenna, okay, that electrical parameter, that weight, weight of the antenna is to be minimized. So now to minimize the weight of the antenna, so we need to use a lightweight material and that material is to be used for them. All the, they will perform better for the all other electrical parameter of that antenna. So we should know that what type of a material is to be used so that it will provide a large power or it has a large handling capability of the antenna there. Okay, lightweight material, so it, it can handle the large power. And then weight is again depending upon that a dimension. But when we say that a dimension, if that is about a dish supposed to be there, so in that case, so what will be the size of that particular dish? Okay, that is about a dish antenna. So what will be the size of the dish antenna? Here? Now then, in that case, we should know that for a given particular antenna, that size, then we can say that material use for this, achieving that particular dimension, and then we'll need a particular weight in this particular antenna system. So while designing the antenna, we should know that weight, that material, and a dimension of the antenna. And then a launch envelope, because satellite when we are launching the satellite that all the components okay all the components are fixed or it will be inside the, the cylindrical antenna system so then when we consider that antenna and then when we need to use that antenna in that case, we need to know about what will be the mechanism used for this that antenna there. So at the time of launching, everything is there inside that cylindrical structure. And once that satellite fits that given position, and then automatically that all the devices will come out, even that solar panels and that antennas and all, and then they have start working. So that's why we should know that what will be the how this antenna works and and then for the specific regions and all 
so that is about a launch angle of the of this antenna there next about we need to know about the is that what will be the spot beam and all or that is about a coverage of that antenna in that case we should know that that pointing accuracy of the antenna pointing accuracy of the antenna means what right now you people have a dish at home and they are that dish is pointed towards the satellite so you can check it on the screen or a tv so what will be the level of the signal received by the dish antenna if you move toward to any direction and find out where we are getting the less power or where we are getting the high power so now we need to fix the dish where we are getting the high power so that is about the pointing accuracy of your receiving antenna at home but similarly that is about the pointing accuracy of the antenna towards the earth station and to achieve that accuracy so that antenna is to be a steerable one okay that antenna is to be a steerable one okay so now it is to be move any direction or it is to be focused to the given particular direction so that antenna is to be steerable and we can fix the position of that antenna any time because what happen these are the two factors mostly affects okay these are the two factors mostly used it is to be considered when your satellite orbit affects or there may be a change in the position of a satellite so in that case these two particular factor is to be considered what will be the pointing accuracy of the satellite position or that antenna position or that antenna there so in a life of an antenna or sorry in a life whole life of a satellite that position of a satellite is changes because of that gravitational force from the moon and sun or gravitational force from the earth itself if it is a low earth satellite okay or we can say that there may be atmospheric drag if it is a low earth orbit satellite so in that particular case that position of that satellite changes so when the position of the satellite changes so it is not a good practice to change every time the every day or every week the position of the satellite so in that case we need to change the position of the antenna pointing toward the earth station so that's why that antenna is to be steerable and it is to be highly accurate one so we'll move the antenna or we can move the antenna in a given direction and then yearly or half yearly we can change the position of the satellite generally it is yearly okay generally after year then point or the position of that satellite is to be changed so that that's why that antenna is to be steerable one so next is about a requirement that is about the environment condition okay or you can say that environmental effect or a requirement in environmental requirement that antenna is to work for any conditions because that antenna is present in the atmosphere and most of the time if you see that a solar panels are pointing towards the sun okay at the time of eclipse we say that there won't be any radiation on the satellite due to the sun but when the satellite is moving around okay around the earth so sometimes some sometimes what happen that sun then a satellite and then earth both are came in the same one axis sun satellite and earth when they are came coming on the single axis at that time the radiation due to the sun will be large when the radiation of the sun 
altitude large, so satellite get heated. Or the solar solar panels get heated. So in that case, that antenna is to be worked in all the environmental conditions. So means we say that a thermal stability of the antenna. That is about means it is pointing towards the that antenna system. Okay, when it will come. Okay, just this one example. We say because solar panels they have the pressure so on a solar panel because of sun, satellite, and earth when they came in the thing one particular line. Mostly it happen when the geostationary satellites are used because geostationary satellite they are nearer to the earth as compared to the low earth orbit satellite or a medium earth orbit satellite. So that's why we should know that what will be the thermal stability. And due to that, what will be the radiation effect? Okay. And then we need to know because of that heating, okay, heating of the particular satellite. So what radiation effect occur on this particular satellite? Now these are about the in that effect, environmental effect on the satellite. So now next we consider that what are the various parameters of that antenna? Okay, general antenna terms or antenna parameter. Mostly we say that parameter sometimes or we can say that is about a antenna there. Okay, that uh, antenna terms there. So antenna parameters we learn. So to understand that antenna parameter, we should know that what will be the radiation pattern of an antenna there. So generally, we are expecting that a radiation pattern of an antenna, suppose we say that we have the antenna, it produces a radiation pattern that is about, we say, it is about a unidirectional radiation pattern. Next antenna is supposed to be we are getting a radiation pattern that is called the bidirectional radiation pattern. Now unidirectional these are nothing but a radiation pattern of an antenna. So omnidirectional radiation pattern of an antenna. This is nothing but a single per antenna we have. It is about a omni-directional radiation pattern. Now, unidirectional radiation pattern means what? Your signal radiated only in a one direction. Okay, it will focus in a one direction. So means it looks like a horn. If you see that it is focused in towards one direction there. So that is about the unidirectional radiation pattern. If we supposed to be use an antenna, now supposed to be now this is my antenna now. Okay, this black pin is my antenna. So now it radiates the signal in only one direction. That is about a unidirectional one. So now if it is radiating the both the direction. So in that case, it is called as a omnidirectional antenna. Now, here, sorry, this one is the bidirectional one. Now it is radiated in all direction. Okay, now it radiates the signal in all direction in one plane. Okay, it radiates the signal. Okay, omnidirectional means what? It radiates a signal in all direction in one plane. So that is called as a, we can say that it's about a omnidirectional radiation pattern. But if you consider that a sun, sun radiated, sun radiation, okay, that we can say that it's about heat from the sun. It radiates the signal or it radiates the heat 
in all the direction in all plane all direction in all plane here it radiates a signal in all direction in one plane in one plane okay on in on only one plane. so that is about the omnidirectional radiation pattern so means point source point source it radiates the signal in all the direction okay it radiates the signal in all the direction that is called as a point source now suppose to be if you see that we have the a tap water now okay if tap is there i could likewise okay it's not direct towards this one so if water flow come from this particular tap so it will just create a given region okay water flow it will move the water to the given region so that is nothing but a omnidirectional radiation path only in one direction so similarly if you consider that a sprinkler in a sprinkler you might have seen in the farm so it provide a signal in all the direction okay so that is about a omnidirectional in a one plane it radiates the signal in a one plane so if we consider the radiation pattern of an antenna and we say that it has a, a major only one major lobe is there okay, i just i tilt it now no, okay i will tilt my note okay so it's about a radiation pattern it provides a one major lobe along with that it provides a side lobe it provides a side lobe along with that it provides a back lobe there so now this one is we can say it is about a main lobe this one we can say it is about a back lobe and these are about the side lobes okay these are all about the side lobes of the antenna this main radiation pattern is about a it has a main lobe there so we should know that what will be the a radiation pattern of a given antenna and for the radiation pattern of a given antenna we should know that what will be the antenna parameters to be considered while talking about the radiation pattern of an antenna so from the main lobe if you consider that this is about a maximum here and if you take a point this two point is about a 3d point so then that we are getting the angle that is about a 3d beam width this one is about a 3d beam width or from that we can find out again the half power point and all and if you focus if you focus from this first null here we have the side lobes come and this is nothing but what we can say it is about a personal beam width it is called as a personal beam width because personal is there because main lobe and a side lobe there is null occurs main lobe and side lobe there is null occur that is called as a personal beam so similarly second null beam width okay we can find out the second null beam width okay so the according to that we have the various types of band width beam width we can see so that's why if there is a first null second null third null fourth null or occur with that antenna is not good if it has only a main beam and they have only a one or two side lobes okay one this is about a one side lobe first side lobe this one is about a second side lobe. if they have the various side lobes that antenna is not good if they have only a small one or two side lobes that then we can say that that antenna is good now and then uh, if they have the back lobe okay if they have the back lobe so then if front to back ratio reduces and then that will affect the gain of the antenna 
So if that antenna doesn't have a back loop, then gain will be increased. So to achieve the electrical parameter, as we say here, that is about the beam width, or you can say that they have what will be the side low performance, we say. According to that, we consider the antenna. So generally, in the most of the cases, that horn antenna is used. Okay, in the most of the cases, that horn antenna is used and a dish antenna are used. The dish antenna is nothing but a reflector antenna. So before that, we need to learn about that, what are the antenna parameters. So mostly, that parameter of an antenna or antenna terms that are depending upon that, what will be the bandwidth of that antenna. That is important parameter of that antenna is nothing but the bandwidth of that antenna. So generally we can calculate that bandwidth. Okay, is equal to what? What will be your F2 minus F1? We can calculate. So that will give us the what will be the or you can say that range of frequency. Generally we say that bandwidth is nothing but the range of operating operating frequency range of the given system so we can find out we can say that's about the bandwidth now okay there is a question about the side loops now this is about a generally antenna i have the main lobe and they have the multiple side loops Okay, now main lobe is main radiation pattern, and these are about the side lobes are nothing but the noise. If the side lobes are not there in the radiation pattern of an antenna, then antenna is very good. If that back lobe is not present in the antenna, then again we say that antenna is good. So we need to design an antenna in such a way that we need to minimize the side lobes and the back lobes. But how to achieve this? So people are using the horn antenna for this particular purpose. So no back lobe, no side lobe should be there if we are using the horn antenna. And then from the main beam to the side beam, side lobe here, so we can find out that first null beam width, then second null beam width. If that first null beam width and second null beam width components are wider and wider, okay, wide. So then we can say that your beam width is again a wide here. So if that first null beam width is a small, so we can find out that beam width will be a small there. So side lobes are nothing but a noise, or we can say that is about a loss for the given antenna. So bandwidth is nothing but the a beam with them. That is about a re operating frequency of the given particular antenna there. Next is about a beam width. Beam width means what? What will be the power distributions of the antenna? Now this one. Here is about a radiation pattern. So in which we say that is about a power distribution. So power distribution means what? I suppose to say that this one is about a, a radiation pattern and in the each and every radiation pattern they have some particular power distributions of the antenna. And for the given particular power distribution, what will be the radiation pattern of the antenna there? So I suppose to be I brought one page there. Okay, so now we can find out what will be the particular radiation pattern there occur for the given particular antenna. We will see here what will be the radiation pattern. Okay, uh, so
So generally, the radiation pattern is there. So radiation pattern is nothing but what a power pattern of the antenna. So just like we have the a different different. Okay, so likewise radiation lobes are there. Okay, so just like a circles here. We need to draw a radiation pattern for the given particular power. So you might have seen that a micro student or you might have seen that uh, in somewhere in the second year that antenna system. Now, if we draw a radiation pattern, so likewise we are getting the radiation pattern of that antenna. But theoretically and practical radiation pattern is different. Okay, actual, at actual, we are getting the radiation pattern. So from that, we can find out what will be the beam width and what are the personal beam width and how many side lobes and back lobes, what will be the front to back ratios and all that parameter we can find out. So we can display the radiation pattern in the form of a power. We will get that a power distributions. Okay, that we can call it again a power pattern of that antenna. Or if you consider that the antenna is work in its horizontal polarization or vertical polarization, then we need to draw about the a polar pattern of that antenna. So that's why we can say that uh, in that case, we are able to identify that what will be the cross polarization using that particular plots. So, if there are the multiple side lobes are there, then your radiation pattern will be weak. So, that beam will be weak there. So, that is about the beam width, or uh, that we can say that is about a radiation pattern of that antenna. Now, in the case of a beam width, we need to consider that what will be the 3db beam width here so to obtain that we need to find out where we have the maximum 